Okay, so welcome everyone to the Python and Oracle Database Office House for January 2020, 2020. So who are we? Uh, myself in the middle, Christopher Jones, product manager for scripting languages and other sort of bits of the data access layer for, for database group. Uh, Anthony Tuaninga is the creator, maintainer, key linchpin here behind CX Oracle, the, the Python driver for Oracle Database. And he also does a lot of work on our other drivers and Node.js driver and uh, other other things that data access team. And then Blaine Carter, who's our evangelist out there in the uh, space, making sure we're getting our message out there to you and making sure we're getting the feedback from you about what you want. So for those not familiar with the office hours, uh, it's really, I guess, should be called office half, half hours, something like that. Uh, we start with this little bit of an overview. Uh, it's changed this month, so we're getting used to it. The stuff is the sort of icebreaker theme that we're just going to give you a little bit of education on, edification, and then we go over to you just for your questions. So we try and keep it kind of pretty tight. So let's have a look at stuff. So this month I thought we'd talk about continuous query notification, CQN, and I suspect a lot of Oracle people already know about this. Um, it was previously in uh, older versions of Oracle database called database change notification, and it kind of um, allows applications to receive notifications when tables change. And the, the DCN just notified if any of the data in that table changed. Nowadays, it's much more sophisticated. You actually, and I'll show you this in practice, you register a query. So you actually type in a query, it, you know, it doesn't run, um, and you get notified if data changes and that data would have affected the output of that query. So it gives you a finer control over the notifications that you receive. Um, APIs, many languages, uh, PL SQL, uh, quite common. So you can do these callbacks from PL SQL into a, and call a PL SQL package when, when you want this notification to be acted on. And obviously we're interested in Python CX Oracle. So let me go into demo and hopefully my VPN network, remote database, et cetera, et cetera, are working well. Um, so I have a little bit of a demo here. And the first thing that, um, if I can get to my notes up on my other screen, so I make sure I tell you everything that you need. The, um, the first thing that you would need if you're setting this up for, for people is to actually grant yourself this change notification privilege. Uh, and once you've done that, then I'm just going to be using for this demo, just this little demo table, CQN demo tab, uh, with a key and a value. No surprises there. So that's just a little scheme that I'm using. Uh, this is MDT, the alias for my desktop hostname. And then obviously nowadays we're all using pluggable databases. So this is the standard default pluggable database service running on my desktop platform. Um, so I've run that, um, you know, I guess I could run that again if I really wanted to. Um, uh, you know, it's not gonna do anything major, but we'll just check that the uh, connection is working. And while that's going at the bottom screen, I'm just gonna have a look at the the basic sample. So this is a base and I'll just pop up in the full screen. This is the, the simplest that I could do to get a, a secret example running. Obviously we need a connection to the database here. Um, need the events mode true, because we're actually receiving uh, internally kind of events back from the database that uh, these notifications are available. And once you've got a connection, you subscribe. And we use this also for things like advanced queuing and things like that. But uh, for here, we're using it for uh, um, notifications, database change notifications. And we have this quality of service flag. I'll show you some of the other options in the future. This is the old database change notification, the default. We're gonna get notification for any change to that table, which we register down here. So any change to this CQN demo tab will cause an event and the callback, which inconveniently here is actually also called callback. This uh, method is gonna get called. Uh, stop is interesting. Uh, you saw here in a little demo is it just basically says, hey, you know, drop, drop this. I don't want to hear anything after 30 seconds. Client initiated, I'm going to discuss a little bit later on. So let's split that screen back up again and um, we'll run this. So we obviously need to run Python, CQN1. 
that's going to sit there. There's the loop at the bottom just so that the application still ran. And that's the other important bit, of course, it's, uh, it's in that application. So it needs to run. I have an insert script. I suppose I should show you that. And that just does an insert and commit. The commit is the important bit. Without the commit, then you're not going to get the, the notifications. And there we go. We've got a CQN message at a particular time, and I can continue just running this insert. And we keep getting extra insert messages. So it's a great way to communicate between multiple processes. And obviously, if you have something like a, a cache there, if your Python application is caching some data or wants to, to keep that cache kind of roughly valid, you can make sure that you get a notification if the table has changed in the database, and then the application can go and, and try and refresh its cache somehow. And I'll show you that in a, in a minute. Let's look a little bit more detail of what you can do with CQN. Um, I do, 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 do I want to show the constants? Maybe not. Let's uh, let's just show the uh, the actual code. So this is this is a much fuller um, callback method. If we look that lower down first, though, at the subscribe, we're actually doing the quality of service query. It doesn't make a lot of difference in this particular case because I'm still doing that insert. Uh, but this would be that if if the particular query which I register. Uh, lower down somewhere, which is exactly the same if the data set for this had changed, which of course, since it's a select star, means you know, pretty much any of the, the data has changed. Raw IDs means that the callback method is going to get the raw IDs of the changed data. And that's one little interesting quirk. We've had some discussions with the CQN team about whether they can actually pass data into the callback itself. So you could get like the whole row that has changed. At the moment, we just get the row ID of changed rows. So you can see that this message which gets passed actually has, if you guys probably scanned ahead, we've got a lot of attributes. So we get the list of queries, each query has IDs, kind of operations, was it delete, insert, et cetera, et cetera. What table was um, operated on, the row IDs I mentioned before. And we're gonna print that out. I'll just show you that in, the, in a moment. And also the subscription when we when we initially, as of course, this is the, you know, the start of the function, the start of the, uh, the program. Subscription itself has a bunch of attributes so we can work out what's going on here. And I'll show you some of these in the uh, in the manual in a minute. So connection, create a subscription, register a query, and then lower down we just wait. We've got this registered uh, flag here. You may have noticed that if I scroll back up. So there's a constant. Uh, not a constant, a, a global variable. And that's set true here, but inside the callback, it actually can be set false. And so one of the messages that the callback can receive is actually a, a deregistration message itself, and that would happen after this this timeout. So once that deregistration has occurred, you know, the timeout's occurred, deregistration message gets, uh, gets uh, initiated. We set that global, and then our loop down here will, will terminate. Probably won't actually get to that stage, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll see. Let's uh, let's run demo again. So this time I'm going to run CQN2, and while that's running, I'll actually just show you. I have a reg reg procedure here. Um, this actually is useful. Uh, I believe this is only for those client initiated connections, not for the the other connections uh, I'll talk about in a minute. But this will tell you whether or not the connection has been established appropriately. So I can actually just run that, and that will tell me that I have a registration enabled, and I've connected, and I haven't yet disconnected. I better actually do something with that connection before those 30 seconds occur. And of course, I think it was a little slow that deregistration occurred. So let's run that again. And I guess I should just check. So registration live, yep. And I was playing yesterday with, with that timeout thinking, hey, I didn't want to set it too long. Oh, there we go. So an operation has been received and I'll just do another one so you can see it running. So let's uh, stop that there. Not, I uh, won't do anything more, but you can see that, uh, uh, I'll pop that back up. This is everything from here is actually the uh, message that was received. So we get everything from transaction IDs, row IDs, and uh, let me just kill that. Uh, we can show anything that we want at that level. Let me just pop up the manual at this stage if I can get to my browser window without the flyovers. And I'll go back here and to do, so subscribe. 
didn't really want to do a lot of slide where manual has a lot of inf information about it. So subscribe is the call that you saw me there do first at the, uh, the start of the examples. Um, we have some things here which can be quite useful, things like grouping. If you have a lot of messages coming into an application, you may not want your, uh, when I say a lot of messages, if you have a lot of um, transactions coming into a table, you know, changing that query result set, you may not want every single message to come to your application because that may overwhelm your application. So it's possible to group things. And for example, we can group by time. Uh, so you could say, hey, um, uh, there's a constant uh, which says, hey, I'm going to group by time. And then you might specify how many seconds and you would only receive at least a, a maximum of one message per that, that time quantum that you put there. If I'd said 10 seconds, I'd only get one message per 10 seconds at most. So you get all of the uh, events up to some predetermined limit, which you can configure in the CQN side, and that's not a, a, a CX Oracle of, um, limit, but there's a, I think it was a, a hundred we decided yesterday, Anthony. So you can get a you know, maximum of about a hundred hundred events in the in the one message by default, and you can change yeah. that. That's correct. Um, that's correct, yep. And we've seen the callback. Uh, IP address is useful. Um, and I do want to talk about that a little later, but let me just talk about it while I've got it here. The default is client initiated is false. And that's to do with the way connections get established between Python and the database. Um, sometimes the database has to call back. I do have slides on this. Sometimes the database has to call back. Um, and in that case, knowing the IP address of where the Python is running uh, can be useful so the database can call back to the Python application so it can send the events properly so that you would use this in the default case. Examples I'm showing have this set to true. Um, so what else do we have that I just want to show from the manual? Um, so you can see here a bunch of those subscription options, the quality of service we mentioned. Um, the, I'll let you look at these later in your, in your own time, but one of the useful things here is reliable. And that can be useful if you decide that you want your application to actually never lose those events. And some events are important, some are you don't really care about, you know, getting log messages left, right, and center, you're not gonna to care too much maybe if you lose one message uh, about a, a log entry because next time you look at the log, you're gonna see all those entries anyway. Um, but you know, sometimes things are important. You might wanna set this quality of service reliable flag. Uh, and I think I had to, to do, what else do I have in the doc? Uh, it's all in, uh, you can see I'm linking to the standard CX Oracle documentation here. So subscription object showed a little bit there in one of the examples, the kind of attributes that you can see about when you do that subscribe call. And then the other important one was the message objects. Uh, you can see you have all of these attributes carefully described here. Uh, useful looking at examples. I think Anthony's gonna push another example. Actually, it's the one I'm gonna show you right now. I think he's gonna push that into the GitHub repository for CX Oracle in the next day or so. And uh, that will be kind of nice to look at. So let's look a little bit more. I mentioned about these row IDs. So this is um, how you might actually update that mid-tier cache that I was speaking about earlier. So you get your event, you get the row ID that some row has changed in, that, in the database and you wanna update your kind of cache. You, in your callback, have to go and you actually have to go and requery using the row ID that you were passed to get that updated data. And then you might do something with it here. I'm just printing it out, or rather Anthony's just printing it out. Um, and uh, you know, in the real application, you might be updating your cache at this point of time. So this is a standard callback deregistration we spoke about a little bit earlier. Of course, you now have to get your own connection so you can do your query lower down. So we're using a connection pool no real surprises for, for people familiar with Oracle. We do promote session pools because they give you all sorts of scalability, high availability functionality. Even if you're only using one or two connections from a pool, um, session pools can be very useful things to, to actually implement. Um, and you can start seeing here some of those other uh, constants. I didn't show you those when I showed you the manuals, but you can see that the row operation you know, was a delete. Yes, we're counting the deletes. And obviously there's nothing to query if we have a delete. So we just continue through the loop and check all the other messages that we got um, or inserts and updates, we might be uh, printing out those. Let me just run those and not bore you too much with the code because you'll see this in um, soon in the repo and you'll be able to watch the video anyway later if you care. So I'm just gonna run Python CX3 and 
we can check the reg see registers. I'm going to talk about why I do this in a minute. Um, okay, that's registered. So let's do an insert. Wait for notifications. And there we go. So we've event was received and our callback has actually done the query to actually find the data which has changed. All my inserts did a key one value ABC, so it's not particularly exciting. You can imagine doing all sorts of polling applications and all sorts of fun things here. There's the delete which will come through in a, in a minute. So let's um, let's go back and talk a little bit about the client-initiated versus server-initiated and some of the things there. So this is the default mode for CQN subscriptions. This is one which has been around for a long time. So when you do this connection subscribe call, you know, obviously go across the database and say, I've got a, uh, you know, I need to register interest in a, in a query, in a, in a result set or a table. And the database needs to be able to call back. This is the default, the old server initiated connections. Database needs to be able to call back into your Python process. And I showed you that IP address setting, which you could use at that time if, if you had a fixed IP address. Um, this is annoying for those of us working in a sort of dynamic DHCP you know, networked environment where we don't really have fixed client machines. And so if you are lucky enough to be using 19.4 database and 19.4 client and CX Oracle 7.3, you can use what they call client initiated or in the CQN doc, they sometimes call it secure connections. And that's that extra flag client initiated equals true at the subscribe call. Um, sorry, I should have put that in here. But it means that when you subscribe for a connection, subs sorry, subscribe for a query, your, your pipe is open at that stage by the connect to the database. So there's no need for the callback. So your, you know, if you can connect to the database to run any of your other queries, then this kind of CQN is going to work for you. This mode of CQN is going to work for you. So it's much more user friendly in many senses. And they kind of call it secure. I think because it means that you don't have to open up your, your, um, your applications, your, your client applications um, you know, for network traffic. You just need your standard, whatever you've done to secure your database behind the for, firewall um, connection capabilities. Um, so I mentioned there the versions that you require. Um, the CQN team have told us there may be a brief delay after subscribe returns, and so that's why I was just checking registrations. And really, that's just uh, for that connection to be established properly, so that the subscribe function may return, but the connection still needs to be established. I don't know why they did it that way. Um, so you can check that AQ notification clients, and as I say, I think that's only for the, the client initiated connections that view. Uh, they have a couple of um, recommendations at this stage. I'm sure they'll be looking at how to improve things. One is that on the database side, only have one listener. And the other thing they've noticed is that people try and use IPC or, or bequeath connections, you know, particularly if you're on the, the one machine, uh, which if, by the way, if you're running application on the same machine as a database, you don't need client initiated because you're all in the same environment. But anyway, if you're using uh, a, a, you know, TNS names, connect strings, make sure you're using TCP kind of connections. Um, and what else do I have in my notes that I wanted to talk about? Um, oh, if you're going to unsubscribe so, uh, from, from CQN, because there's an unsubscribe, the opposite of subscribe, uh, you need to be connected to the same user or actually just use the same connection. Um, oh, and the other thing about client initiated, and I should have put this on the slide, is it doesn't have that group notification support that I just mentioned, which was useful. This is a new feature, so they're busy um, working hard to make sure that it uh, gets out as soon as possible, and you know they haven't yet added that. So that's a little unfortunate just for us as, as users, because in the high volume environments, group notifications are useful. Um, but they, as a team, have always said, and this is their bottom line, that CQN is useful for infrequently updated tables. So um, yeah, we've used it quite successfully in a number of situations, uh, large voting applications, things like that. So I wouldn't be afraid of using it, um, but just be aware that it's, uh, you know, it does have these kind of couple of limitations in, in my mind. Um, and I think that's it for that I, I wanted to talk about. Um, I think now it is over to you uh, and we can follow up. We've kind of got 10 minutes of our half hour. Obviously, we can go as long as you like. And I don't know whether Blaine can do. I'll put the, the uh, resources up there for anybody who wants to drop off. Um, and I've been watching my own screen, so I haven't kind of seen what's been going on with the office hour screen. Do we have any questions or has everybody been uh, shy? 
Being shy so far. Being shy so far. That's okay. That's no problem. Um, We've got uh, access there if you want to privacy, privately contact us about your issues. Uh, definitely do encourage you to contact us even if it's just to say, hey, I work for company X, I'm using CX Oracle. Because without knowing that customers are using these products, then our upper management is going to say, well, you know, we'll put resources where we do get customers squealing for, for help. So yeah, definitely make sure you do contact us at some stage. Um, give it a couple more minutes. And then I'm quite happy to drop off and go and have my breakfast here in my Australian morning. Uh, and we can reconvene next month, which will be the 17th of March, I think, UTC, if I'm correct. No questions? Well, I suggest we keep it short and sweet and we will see you in two months we're going to run these office hours every second month this year um, just to interleave in, in our group we tend to do a, a node js session and a python session and instead of trying to run them within a couple of days each other we're going to alternate months with those gives you time to think up questions and suggest ideas of things you'd like us to talk about so with that, thank you for attending the Python and Oracle Database Office Hours for January 2020. We'll see you in March. Goodbye, everybody.